cataractcoach.com quiz. What would you do differently for this cataract surgery? Look carefully. What do you see there? There. That's endothelial cell dropout. That's looking at the corneal endothelium. And of course, this patient has Fuchs corneal dystrophy. So what should we do differently in this case? Now, luckily, the patient has a good endothelial cell function and still has a corneal pachymetry that's reasonable at 560 microns. After making the paracentesis, we're going to put our anesthetic inside the eye, preservative-free, and we put it with a little bit of an air bubble. And you can see there are a lot of tiny little air bubbles along the endothelium now. Now we instill the dispersive viscoelastic. So you can see a lot of those air bubbles being pushed around. But we intentionally trap some of these microscopic air bubbles against the corneal endothelium. And that's going to allow us to directly visualize, is there still dispersive viscoelastic present? We'll make our main incision here with a diamond keratome. That looks good, single plane, good tunnel length. As long as we still see those tiny bubbles there, we can be assured that there's a good protective coating of dispersive viscoelastic. So there again, those are the bubbles that we're looking at. We'll do the capsorexis. And in this patient, for the lens calculations, if you think the patient is never going to need an endothelial cell transplant, you can certainly aim for a plane of outcome. If you think the patient is going to need an endothelial cell transplant in the near future, I encourage you to aim a bit more myopic, let's say about minus 0.5 or minus 0.75 diopters in the post op period, and therefore when the endothelial cell transplant happens, that'll give a final refraction closer to Plano. But in this case, I think the patient's going to do great and not going to need an endothelial cell transplant, at least for the next many years. We'll do some hydro dissection, just gentle, get a few waves, there's a delineation. We still have good um, protection of the endothelium with the viscoelastic, the dispersive. And we see if the nucleus will rotate, maybe a little more higher dissection. Now, the next important move is you always lose a little viscoelastic when you do the higher dissection. So now put in more dispersive right here in the center, put in more. And that just gives a little bit added protection. For the nucleus removal, I encourage you to use phaco power modulations as well as lower flow settings. Let's run less fluid through the eye. So here I'm going to go in more slow motion settings. And I want to keep the nucleus in the capsular bag. Chop it in the capsular bag. I don't want to bring it near the endothelium. So I want to do nucleus removal intracapsular. That looks good. Let's fast forward ahead here. Here's the end with the cortex removal. And you can see as we remove the cortex, you'll notice that there's still a very nice covering of the endothelium with the viscoelastic. And therefore, you see that with those microscopic bubbles from the beginning of the case. And so we'll clean up the um, cortex from the eye, clean up the anterior segment. And again, I, my goal is to run as little fluid through the eye as possible. The things that are going to damage the endothelium will be ultrasonic energy. More energy is worse for the cornea. And the other thing is fluid, the amount of fluid that runs through the eye. Remember that the volume of the anterior chamber is probably a quarter of a cc. And even if we include the the posterior chamber, the full anterior segment volume, it's going to be a half cc or so. And if you're running 500 cc's of bound flow solution through the eye, that's excessive. That'll be a thousand times turnover. You should be able to complete a case like this with 50 cc's of fluid or less. Here comes the eye well. We'll put that in the capsule bag. And you can still see we have a good um, protection with the dispersive viscoelastic. The rest of the case proceeds pretty normally. We do want to minimize the patient's post-op refraction. Um, and so in this case, we did aim for plano. We also want to minimize the post-op inflammation. So I'm going to show you what we do here. Here's removing the viscoelastic from the eye. And we're careful to remove most of it, almost all of it. But we don't want to be very aggressive with fluid flow near the endothelium. So that looks excellent. Lens is nicely positioned. Good overlap with the capsorexis. I think the range where you look at the um, choice of doing just a cataract surgery or combined cataract and corneal transplantation of uh, the endothelium, I think it's about the 600 to 650 micron thickness. So if you have a corneal thickness that's less than 600, you may be in the clear. Finally, at the end, here's preservative-free triamcinolone, and that'll really quell the inflammation. And this patient 
the great. Thanks for watching.